today. On management tool to their employees. So whenever you are on social media and you report to someone, right? Someone is uh, spamming something or someone is spreading hate. You report to that guy. What happens next is that report is sent to the employees of that social media. Let's say Twitter. Twitter guy received the request. Okay, this account is being reported. What happens? He checks the account and he is like, okay, this account is spamming. So what he does is he has account management tool. He restricts that account. He blocks that account. He deletes that account if required. So he has this account management tool where he can manage accounts of all the individuals. They can, you know, restrict permissions or give permissions. They can block accounts from tweeting further, and all these uh, permissions, all these privileges they have under this account management tool. So once the employees clicked on this email, the email had a malicious link. So once the uh, the moment employee clicked on that link, uh, they get uh, the hacker. Got the access of account management tool, and once the hacker got the access of account management tool, they exploited it by you know hacking into high-profile individuals like Barack Obama, Elon Musk, and then tweeted all of this. So it is also a social engineering attack. How? Well, the attack attackers played with psychology of these uh, Twitter employees by pretending to be you know trustworthy, trustworthy companies. Uh, maybe whatever they did, they sent a mail. The mail could have said anything, but the mail was found trustworthy. That is why the employees clicked on it, and the moment they clicked on it, they got hacked. So we'll talk about how this happened, and we'll do the same uh, today in our lab. But uh, this was the uh, infamous Twitter Bitcoin scam of 2020. A lot of social engineering attack has been happened since uh, early 20s, early 2000s. So. we have to you know 
be safe about that so today we'll learn how to protect ourselves from that and also how to attack these two so social engineering attack are divided into two categories mainly first is physical social engineering and the second is digital social engineering so let's uh, talk about physical social engineering first so this category involves manipulating people in person or through physical means to gain unauthorized access or obtain sensitive information so you all know uh, you all so far you all understood what social engineering is right it's uh, using human psychology to gather information so there are two ways first is physical way we can talk to people you know confidently pretending to be someone else and we can do physically physical things physically we can manipulate people and then second is digital first we'll uh, talk about physical social engineering so there are different ways you can gather information physically first is impersonation impersonation means pretending to be someone else which you are not so right now let's say let's say okay Okay. Go to Gautam. I say, hey Gautam. I mail to Gautam. Let's say, I say, hi Gautam. I am Abhishek. I am your instructor of penetration tester uh, classes you are uh, taking right now. And uh, nice meeting you. I got to know that you are very interested in the classes. Just quickly form this uh, survey. This survey form. Just quickly submit all the details of you yours in this survey form. And then uh, it is just a small survey we are doing for all our, all our students. so gautam is like okay i know this guy he is our instructor maybe i'm not abhishek i'm someone else is someone else some other student in this class knows that gautam also attends this class so he sends gautam a mail uh, that okay i'm say i'm uh, abhishek even when he is someone else so he'll say i'm abhishek and uh, you have to fill this survey and the gautam will be like okay i know my instructor he is the one who teaches us penetration testing so he'll click on the link He'll fill the survey details while so filling the survey details. His account details are also transmitted through that malicious link, and boom, your hack, your credentials, your account, Gautam's account credentials are, you know, harvested, so to speak. So I now have the hacker now have Gautam's personal credentials. So it is called impersonation. This technique is called impersonation. We can do it physically too. So I may come to someone's house. someone else will come to someone's house a company i can go to a company and i'll, I'll say i'm a delivery guy someone so one of your employee asked uh, deliver ordered this order thing and i'm here to deliver the guard will say okay okay go inside i'll go inside i'll search the company's premises i'll see what things are where i'll get their information by asking to by asking other workers or of where are the employees where is the marketing department where is the you know database center just to just basic information so that i can proceed by delivering my order i am pretending to be a what a delivery guy so i can impersonate to be any type of guy i can just uh, you know get ready uh, get a suit nice black suit and go to a company's door and pretend uh, i am a i am your business partner and get entry to the company's premises i can then look out for basic informations basic uh, necessary informations understand basic paperwork i can uh, get access to paperwork of that company it's a physical means of doing things like impersonation okay second is tailgating tailgating similar similarly it's it's, a, it's the same way so let's say there is a, on the entry gate there is an authorization check up only people who are authorized can enter into the enter through the gate so what i can do is i can go with a authorized person so let's say i'm Uh, i do not have permissions to enter the premises i can go with an authorized person and the moment authorized person enters the gate i can go with him so it's called tailgating i'm following that guy who has authorized access and at the moment he enters i also enter behind him so it's called tailgating third is dumpster diving dumpster diving is uh, a lot of companies they have paperwork right they have account details they do business with other companies so what they have all the work they do is in papers right so once the deal is done once everything is done what do they do with this uh, paper what do you think so what these companies do is a lot of individuals also do this uh, what we do is we use this paper and we just throw it on the garbage in the trash bin we throw all these papers and uh, what you can do is one what an attacker can do a social engineer what can what he can do is 
you can go to those uh, trash bins find about those papers having those crucial information because it is still there right it doesn't matter uh, if they are in uh, trash bins a hacker doesn't care about it he'll go to those trash bins uh, find those papers having that crucial information that is also a way of stealing information so that's called uh, dumpster diving the next is a uh, pretexting pretexting is nothing but just uh, gathering enough information before going to the premises of a company or uh, talking to a company employee for example let's say i got to know that uh, the marketing department so boss sheetal is on vacation in london she is enjoying her time in london and her employees are uh, and uh, instead of her some other manager is working for the time being what i could do is i can uh, go to that uh, particular uh, guy the manager who is a temporary manager there i can say oh uh, yeah hi so i had a chat with i had some deal with sheetal and i got to know that she is on vacation in london and so i can proceed with the following the, uh, deal with you the guy will be like okay he knows that sheetal is in uh, london and she is on a vacation so he already so he know sheetal right that means he know sheetal and he has worked with a company before so he'll be like okay let's uh, proceed the deal and i can then ask that guy that sheetal had asked so provided me with the server details can you provide with these uh, same server details with me now like the username and all so i can gather information this way also by using pretexting okay so to build a trust basically next is a uh, security batch cloning it's nothing but just uh, a lot of premises have security batches only people with security badges can enter the premises for example you have uh, schools and colleges we have uh, we had i cards in our schools and colleges right only people uh, students with i card were allowed to enter but isn't it very easy to clone a i card i can just go to a student ask them what's it uh, can you your i card take a picture of it and clone it with my details and then i can simply enter the premises so these are all the physical ways of uh, doing social engineering so that i can enter the premises or i can convince someone you know into giving us the information physical means of social engineering requires a person to be very articulate and confident you have to be very confident you know uh, very articulate with your words to gather information from uh, a company's employee or a high profile person working at a company right at a bigger post like a vice president or a manager so this is uh, how kevin bitnick used to do he would call companies employees and pretend to be some big personality right used pretexting he would gather information okay so this employee is on vacation at this place okay so he used he would use that information to build trust with other employees he would do he would do dumpster diving he would gather information about those he would search for these uh, these paper works that the company had dumped into the trash bin but uh, these days uh, company are much uh, protected in the way because the companies what they do with this paperwork is they either burn those papers or shred them into uh, tear uh, small pages right so that none can read between the lines but a majority of companies they don't even care about cyber security they don't even care about hackers and all because they think it's just over hype and that is why they don't pay attention to these uh, details and that is where a hacker exploits them so anyway this was a physical means of social engineering let's uh, talk about digital ways of uh, social engineering okay so this category involves manipulating people through digital channels such as email phone calls online messaging to achieve the same objective i don't have to go to a company's premises i don't have to go to their trash bins to check for papers i don't have to go physically and talk with their employees i can also do that by sitting in my home and this means of social engineering is what mostly used by the hackers what they do is and you can see the picture on the left side there is a particular reason i have used uh, this image you all have uh, it, it's a guy doing uh, fishing in a lake okay so what is fishing essentially a fishing is uh, what we do how do how, we, how do we catch a fish we tie a bait on a rope on a fishing rod and then wait for someone someone to you know attack on that bait so that we can compromise with that guy's security so let's say you throw a bait into the pond the fish comes it catches the 
bait and we catch the fish that is how the similar way of the similar protocol we use in the digital way of social engineering what we do is we i can send a mail to let's say gautam i can send a mail that gautam you are congratulations you are selected for a comp uh, for the final round of final round of company you are selected for this and this you will be given this amount of salary and gautam is just uh, in the clouds he is extremely happy and i'll say okay so this is what i did just click on this link and uh, submit your details like aadhar and the pan card so that we can proceed further gautam is like okay this email sounds legit and the reward is really big and that is why i am setting up a bait you know i'm creating a bait i said the you will be earning 30 30000 per month 50000 per month and gautam gautam is like yeah i'm really happy and i'll immediately send the details so the moment you send the details i you are now just tagged i now have his aadhar details his pan card details and all so i what i did as uh, i actually didn't i do something similar to like fishing right i provided a bait like on 50000 a month 60000 a month and fabricated an e- email a clean email and gotham clicked on it and he get caught so isn't it like fishing that is why it is called fishing fishing with a with a p in the cyber security world it is called fishing but with a p okay it's called phishing and i did it with an email so it's called email phishing so this is one of the way of you know gathering information from people using digital way of social engineering it's called email phishing i set up a bait and the my fish attacked on the bait and i got to got their personal information and this i used using email so this is called email phishing i can do the same thing on a mobile phone using a call i'm sure a lot of you have some day received a call from a unknown a known caller asking that you have received you have won a lottery at this on this number your your number is get among the lakhs of numbers and you are lucky that you won this amount of money okay so they what they what they are doing is they are doing social engineering through calling through voice mails voice calls okay they are trying to catch you by using what voice calls so that is why it is called voice phishing wishing okay the second step is wishing it's voice call phishing we are doing essentially we are doing the phishing but using the voice call method and not the email method that is why it is called phishing here also we are doing the same thing i may call you i'll say okay gautam your account uh, we are seeing some suspicious uh, activities on your account and i'm calling from your bank uh, your state bank of india and i'm seeing some suspicious activities on your account kindly send me the otp i have sent on your mobile number so that i can check uh, with what's happening on your account gautam will be like okay okay state bank of india employee is calling me because some suspicious activities happening okay okay just write, note down the otp i have received and the moment you tell the otp to that uh, attacker he must have set up some configurations and the moment you give the otp he has access to your bank account details and then he'll just transact all the money okay so it was voice mail phishing which is called wishing similarly if we bait our people if we bait the victims using sms it is called sms phishing okay i send sms to you that you have won lottery of 25 lakhs i am sure a lot of you must have received a message on whatsapp you know you have won the kbc uh, you have won uh, your number is lucky and you have won you have won kbc you have won 25 lakhs of rupees on kbc uh, just have to send this amount of money to to this account send 25000 in this account so that you can receive the rest of the amount in your bank account so this is called sms phishing so a lot this uh, again we are giving the victims a bait like you have won 25 lakh rupees uh, it's a big reward so a lot of people also f- uh, falls for it so you will send the details you will send 25000 to that account and the account will be like vanished you wouldn't even know where the account went where that individual went so it's called sms phishing another method of uh, doing digital social engineering is infected usb so let me ask you if you found while walking down the road or while walking inside the campus if you found a usb 
on the road or on the campus what it is what is the first thing you would do i'm sure 90% of you would pick up the usb and will be like oh i got this uh, 32 gb usb drive god i got extra space nice you will immediately plug that usb into your computer you wouldn't even think before doing that and that is what they told me remember a study i was studying once day there was a research i was studying what a guy would a guy studied around around hundreds of usb drives inside a campus and uh, once he and all these usb drives were infected and i'll tell you what that means is in the in later in a moment so all these uh, pen drives were infected so when he went home that guy when when he went home he's opened his computer and he got to know that around 98% of those pen drives were used he had information about all those 98% uh, individuals who used these pen drives onto their computers and around 45% individuals even opened the files inside that so he he has also he had also in, uh, installed some files on that usb some around 45% uh, people also installed those files so that is what we all do once we when we pen drive or some extra storage we immediately plug it in on our system but we don't realize is a hacker might have infected the usb so the moment you enter the usb onto your computer uh, a file is uh, auto run is set on auto run so the file is uh, starts running automatically in the background you don't even notice that in the background the, uh, a file has started running right? and that file is connected your computer your victim's computer to the attacker's computer and now the attacker has access of uh, your whole computer your whole co- device is compromised and you wouldn't even know that we'll do that i'll tell you how you can uh, create a infected usb and play with your friends okay so and uh, yeah so let's uh, let's do this that's enough of the talking not enough of the theory let's do an attack so we'll perform a so, uh, email phishing attack okay we'll perform a email phishing attack to get to harvest user credentials so in this case what i'll do is i am an attacker so i'll send an email to a victim okay it can be any type of email okay i may say that there i'm finding some i may I, i can pretend to be a guy from google and i can say okay dear abhishek i am seeing some vulnerabilities or maybe some complexities on your account right now suspicious activities on your account please click on this account to update uh, your rails right now and the victim will be like okay this mail is from google i should click on it and update my details the moment you will click on it will have his informations okay so let's do this let's create an email phishing attack and uh, to harvest user credentials and we'll do this by using a uh, toolkit known as social engineering toolkit okay we'll use a social engineering toolkit is a pre-installed software that comes with program that comes with kali linux so let's uh, just do this. i just quickly log in into it i hope you can uh, all can see my linux machine right now just thumbs up if yes. you do a thumbs up if you all can see my kali linux machine right now there uh, yes okay 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 thank you thank you let's go back so what we'll do is we'll uh, do an email phishing attack to harvest user credentials okay so i'm on my linux machine let me quickly open the terminal so the tool we are going to use it's called set social engineering toolkit and you don't have to install anything for that it comes pre installed on kali linux okay so to start it what we'll do is we'll enter set double o l k i t set toolkit okay now when i press enter chances are it won't work why because we haven't given the permissions the pseudo permissions so i'll type in i type in s u d o then the set toolkit i don't know uh, how many of you understand this command it's called a sudo that means super do which means i am giving administrative privilege i am saying that okay i am the administrator now run this command using administrator privileges okay so i type in sudo set toolkit s e t o o l k i t the moment i press enter i'll have to enter my password 
help uh, enter my password the uh, scd toolkit is launched you can see uh, that is how it looks it was uh, created by david kennedy by the way okay and now is just basic information like kennedy's uh, twitter or instagram some details so here is the main information i don't know if you all can see it let me uh, zoom it zoom it in i hope you all can see it now okay so this is the main menu so the first thing is social engineering attack second is penetration testing third is third party modules our focus is social engineering attacks that is what this whole lecture is all about and that is what whole set tool is all about so we'll click one and proceed with the social engineering attacks so there are different kinds of social engineering attacks we can create using this toolkit the first is spear phishing attack vector second is website attack vectors third infectious media generator which will be uh, using later into the uh, lecture okay so to create an email phishing attack and uh, create a website clone to harvest user credentials we'll click on option 2 okay website attack vectors so uh, our uh, aim is to harvest credentials here you can see on the third option it says credential harvester attack method there are different methods of uh, exploiting and doing web attacks like java applet method metasploit method i i i'm, I'm sure you guys have been introduced with metasploit we won't talk about that here so our focus is credential harvester method attack which is option 3 so we'll click on 3 now now comes the actual thing it says how do you want to harvest user credentials do you want to use one of our web templates like they have already made a google sign up page and do you want to use that or do you want to clone a website of your own or you want to import a custom website for example if you already have a website with html and css files you can also import that we want to clone a website our focus is to clone a website so we'll click option uh, click on option 2 okay now it says enter the ip address for the post backend harvester tap snapping what this means is it's saying okay once we harvest the user credentials where do you want to see those uh, details which ip address you want to you want us to send those details so i'll uh, be listening for those user credentials on this linux machine so when the user enter the details i want set to give me information on this machine okay so i'll enter my ip address which is already entered here i'll just click enter so it says now give me the url of the website you want to clone okay so what i'll quickly do is i'll go to my machine and i'll go to github.com because what i want to do is i want my user i want my users github details i want to check his account details so i cannot just clone this url okay because they don't have sign in username and password fields here i have to go here sign in and now copy this url okay so i'll copy this url but uh, I'll, let me tell you what i'm actually doing is i'll i'll be sending an email to my victim as sending to be from github so i'll say okay i'm uh, i'm calling from github i'm an employee at github and i found some suspicious activity on your account please sign in uh, you know so that you can check up with what's happening with your account so the moment uh, the person will click on the, that link that i have provided to sign in on github he will be redirected to a website which i have cloned which looks exactly like github so he won't notice he will uh, come to this website it will look exactly like github he will enter his details and his all details will be reflected on my computer so uh, first thing is i'll clone my github uh, web page so that the victim doesn't even realize that he is on a different website so i'll copy this link here okay go to my kali linux and provide with an email so it says and uh, give me a uh, url of the website of which you want to make a clone so i'll enter the url github.com/login now it has started it has started to clone the website and it, it has uh, cloned this website this particular website is cloned now okay and it has started listening for the information so whenever a user go to this website and in his details all his information will be reflected on my computer uh, let's look at that but before that uh, you should have basic information about uh, how a website works okay so what happens is when i enter a google account on my uh, google uh, let's say if i enter github what happens is github 
has hosted this website on a server so when i enter github.com i'm actually entering uh, the ip address of that server so github. when i enter github.com the request goes to github's server the server is listening for that information the server is like okay abhishek wants uh, wants uh, github website okay let me send it to abhishek so he get this uh, request and then sends the website to me okay so right now if i enter github.com i'll be redirect redirected to this website which is given to me by the github server but i don't want my victim i am i don't want my victim which is this window machine you know windows machine is my victim and this kali linux machine is my attacking machine so i want my victim to go to my website which i have cloned which looks similar to github but is not from github so how can i do that well actually i have hosted the website on my own server what what that means is uh, on this linux machine i have this set social engineering toolkit has created a server okay and on that server it has hosted a website that looks exactly like github.com i can check it i can check it if you want i can just uh, go here uh, let's do nmap and check for open ports okay let me just get back to this and what i can do right now is i can check for open ports on my linux machine if i see an open port of what of a server that means my website is hosted on that server okay i just uh, got back let me do this again credential harvester site cloner and enter the url which is github.com and it has cloned the website and it is live so let me just quickly check okay what i'm essentially doing right now is i'm asking nmap to check if uh, my linux machine has uh, opened a port for server or not okay this is just for the information i can just uh, nmap ask nmap to do this and nmap shows that there are two ports open this is uh, port number 20 22 which is uh, open and it is using ssh service linux or by default uses ssh port number 22 for ssh service but this is not uh, of our concern our concern is port number 80 port number 80 is open for http so port number port number 80 is used by servers okay when a server is on and you know listening for incoming request it opens its port number 80 and that is what we are seeing here a linux machine has started a server on port number 80 and hosted a website named github a clone of github okay so let me go to this uh, ip uh, server oh shit i have just close that server once again let me do that once again i have to you know enter the github url here let me copy the github url what happens in linux is if you press control c it uh, stops the server so by mistake i'm pressing that again and again so anyway let's uh, go to this uh, server and check if the site is hosted or not so right now what i'm uh, what i can do is i can type in http colon forward slash forward slash and the address of that server so what i'm asking web to do is i'm ask, i'm saying okay internet what you do is go to this particular ip address why am i entering this ip address because this is the ip address of the server at which my cloned website is hosted okay so when i enter press enter something similar this look exactly like the github web page you see username password green sign in button everything looks exactly the same the only difference is at the url you don't see github.com you see you see the ip address of my kali linux machine because that is where the this web page is hosted this cloned web page is hosted but uh, you will be like okay i understood that you have cloned a website and uh, hosted on a server on your linux machine but how can i ask my victim to enter these details how would i ask my victim to enter these ip address of my machine on their google right they wouldn't do it well we, they we can use social engineering to for them to do it but how can we do it like i can type http colon permission permission this is the link of my website of my clone website i can just copy it i can go to my gmail account i can send this mail to abhishek@gmail.com let's say there is a guy called abhishek and uh, i want to he is my victim 
I'll send this mail to Abhishek at gmail.com. The subject will be your account needs immediate action. So I'm actually calling from team GetUp. Your account needs immediate action, dear Abhishek. We found some strange behavior on your GetUp account. For better security, please have a view on your recent activities here. Warm regards, team GetUp. And on this uh, thing written here, what I could do is I could uh, go to this link. I can type text to display. I can hide my URL here. So the URL will go to this address and the text it will display will be H-A-R-E here. Okay. So the moment Abhishek will receive this email, he'll be like, okay, some prop, there is some strange behavior with my GitHub account. Okay. So team GitHub is asking me to log into my account for better security. So I, the Abhishek will just click on this uh, here button and will be redirected to this website, this GitHub website. He'll be like, Okay, let me just quickly log in. Okay, so he'll enter details like A B H I S H E K Abhishek, and he'll enter his password like his password is Happy Hacking. Okay, so he won't notice this uh, URL up here. He will just directly enter his username, his password, and click on sign in. You see, he clicked on sign in, but nothing happened. He is redirected to the GitHub website, and the Abhishek will be like. Okay, maybe there was some problem with the internet. The page just refreshed and I didn't see the actual GitHub account. That's all right. I can just enter my account details again and proceed with the data. And that is what exactly will happen. Now you can see up here, the official GitHub website is uh, opened here. So when the Abhishek will keep uh, enter his details and password, he can proceed and he won't even notice that his credentials have been harvested. He can proceed normally. If he press sign in, his account will open and you can enjoy the rest of his time. But he doesn't know that his credentials have been harvested. Let's go to Linux machine. You can see here. You can see the login is ID is Abhishek and the password is happy hacking. And that is how we hacked into his GitHub account. Okay, we know his, his username, we know his password. So you all understood. What I did is I created an email, a phishing email. I said I'm calling from GitHub. This is this, 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 and this. And just click here for moving further. Abhishek will just definitely click on this link, go to this website. He'll be like, okay, I have to log in. So this time, let's say his uh, username is Maverick and his pa password is uh, Maverick. Let's say his password is Maverick96. Okay, he entered his details and see it up here. It doesn't state the URL of GitHub. It uh, displays the URL of the server we have created, the local server, on where the clone website is posted. But he wouldn't notice it. A lot of people would not notice it. Okay, so he'll just enter his uh, username, password, click on sign in, and it will redirect him to the official Google uh, GitHub login page. He'll be like, okay, something's the matter with my internet. It's all right. I can just proceed with entering my basic details. But he didn't realize is the first time he clicked on sign in. His information was sent to my Linux machine. Here you can see login is Maverick and the password is Maverick96. That is how easily we can exploit someone using social engineering. Okay, that was an example of email phishing. Email phishing and uh, credential harvesting. I harvested their credentials. Okay, right now I can close the server by pressing Control. The moment I press Control C, and press enter the server is closed now okay so this time when i uh, refresh and i go to this website let's say i i have closed the server so if abhishek now tries to go to that website nothing will happen because the server is closed the website the clone website is closed everything is closed okay so this time it won't work so i hope you all have understood how this email phishing attack worked okay and uh, you can use this to have fun at your no local network, at your school or at college with your friends, but just don't use it for bad intentions, all right? So that was an example of credential harvesting attack, at attack method, this number three. But I told you that we'll be doing an effective USB attack. In a credential harvest uh, attack, a lot of individuals may get triggered. You know, they'll be like, no, 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 I cannot click on link. Any, any link from the emails because I've been told because these days a lot of people say, you know, don't click links on the email 
which is a great thing for your own protection so this may won't work all the time what you can do is just to play with your friends you can create an infected media infected usb drive so let's do that let's uh, do another type of attack where we create an infected media okay so let's go back to the main menu of uh, social engineering toolkits so we'll again do the social engineering attack to do this we'll uh, press 1 and uh, this time we'll click on option 3 which says infectious media generator all right so let's click on option 3 and it also icp is a great tool okay so it also tells you if you're confused somewhere it also tells you what this attack does is how you can use it and all here we here it gives us uh, two types of uh, bugs that we can create first is file format exploit second is standard meta exploit executable so first is file format exploit you can generate a pdf or other type of file format so that when the user downloads the pdf and opens the pdf his computer will be hacked you will have his details or the second is executable file you know in windows dot exe files are very common so when you see a dot whenever you install something there is a dot exe file you click on it and then the program is installed so we can create either a pdf or a dot executable file we will create a dot executable file in this case okay so i'll press uh, option 2 the moment i press option 2 it says what do you want to do once the user opens this executable file what type of uh, how to, how do you want to exploit what type of exploitation you want to use so there are different uh, types of exploitation i can do i'll press option 1 for windows cell reverse tcp you can and again this is your homework uh, you have to do a little you know study of your own how these type of attack, uh, attacks can exploit the user the victim i'll tell you about the first one which is windows shell reverse tcp let me uh, tell you here so let's say there is a victim pc it is our victim and here we have uh, attacker this is our linux machine okay the blue one is our linux machine and the red one is our uh, victims machine so what happens is i injected a media i created a pen drive and i and uh, you know infected it with a media let dot exe file so i am an attacker so i created this media and infected it with a dot executable file so when the moment the victim ejects this media into his computer and uh, into his device windows device maybe and uh, click on that executable file what happens is that executable file opens up a new window opens up a new window inside victims pc that window is a command window so inside the victims pc the moment the victim plugs in the pen drive and open that executable file a command shell is opened in the victims pc it happens in the background the victim won't even notice it what type of command this type of command shell will be open like i open the dot executable file and this type of cmd will open in his account in his computer but in the background he wouldn't even understand what has happened he will be like okay maybe this executable file is not working all right let's move on to different things but in the background a command shell has opened now that command shell what does it if the guy is connected to internet that command shell connects this victim's computer to the attacker's device okay so the moment he clicks on the exe file a command shell is opened into his pc and it the command shell connects itself with the attacker so now attacker has access to this access of victim's computer using command shell he can do a lot of things he can delete files he can read files he can copy files move files he can even download all these files into his own computer from victim's computer to his own computer okay so that is how we can exploit using that attack and that is what this uh, command shell reverse tcp does is it opens a reverse it opens a tcp port reverse tcp port on victim's computer okay and then provides us with the information you can even see here it says it says spawn a command shell on victim and send back to the attacker it opens a command shell on victim's pc and sends all the privileges to the attacker so we'll uh, click on option 1 okay we want to create this uh, payload now uh, ask us for the ip address of the payload listener so it it says okay once we are connected once the user uh, has uh, opened that exe file and the command shell is opened on which pc you want to listen in other words on which pc you want the command shell to connect so in this case we want to connect it's essentially asking for the attacker's ip address it says okay i have uh, 
the user has uh, opened this .exe file. Now, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to connect to your PC or someone else's PC? So I says, okay, connect it with my Linux machine. So that is how I provided my Linux machine's IP address. It says L host. L host means listening host. So if you don't know what's your Linux machine's IP address is, it's very easy. Just my command terminal and enter IP space A D D R. That stands for IP address. And when you press enter, you can see your IP address here. Okay, this one. ETH zero inside ETH zero. You can see your IP address. This one is IP address. So Control Shift C. You can copy it and you can just paste it here. All right. So I have uh, provided this with uh, my IP address. Next is ask for the enter the port for the reverse listener. It uh, says okay on your PC to when you are listening for all the incoming request, which port you want to use for the listening part. And seriously, we don't care. You can use any port you want. If you press, if you do not uh, provide this with any port, it will use by default. It will use port four four three, I guess, or maybe four 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 four. Port number four 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 four. It will use that for listening. But actually, we don't care. So I'll just press enter, and it will uh, decide the port automatically by default. So right now, you can see it says generating the payload. Please be patient. What is uh, it is doing is it is uh, creating a dot exe file. What we can do is with uh, we can copy that exe file into a pen drive and then give that pen drive to our friend or you know just for learning purposes. Okay, here again, it's illegal to do. So we can give this to our friend or maybe someone on our own circle just for learning purposes. And the moment he opens that dot exe file, uh, we have have that uh, we'll have uh, access to his computer, his or computer. Okay, so we'll just uh, wait for that uh, payload to be created and let's see how much time does it uh, take. Okay, I hope you all are understanding what I'm trying to say here. This is really easy. You don't. Uh, it, it's not a. You don't need a coding here. You don't need a lot of technicalities here. Just commands. Whatever it's asking, you just have to provide that with those commands. So it says payload has been exported to the default set directory located under root dot set payload dot exe. So it has created a payload dot exe that is inside root. Inside dot set directory, okay. So it says uh, copy the contents of the folder to a CD, DVD, USB to auto run, okay. So it's saying just copy the contents inside a pen drive. And how we can can uh, copy the contents? Well, let me just quickly show you. Let's uh, first go to that directory where the payload is located, okay. So we'll have uh, we'll have to uh, so first we have to go to the root directory. To enter the root directory, we have to become a super user. Super user will type sudo su. Okay, enter our password. Now we have become a super super user. To enter the root directory, we'll press cd, change directory. And now you can uh, see we are in the root directory. I can just type in pwd, and you can see we are in the root directory. If I type ls, I wouldn't see anything because dot set directory is hidden. The social engineering toolkit directory is hidden by default. So I can simply just press dot set. And it will take me to the set directory. Now here I can press ls. Okay, we are now in the social engineering toolkit directory. And even if you do not, if you cannot follow along the my commands, you can always watch this video back on YouTube. Okay, so I, inside the set directory, I can see a lot of things listed: attack vector, auto run, bytes dot file. I don't have to care about all those things. Okay, I can just uh, change my directory to auto run. Dot auto run. Sorry, so change directory to auto run. Now, if I press ls, if I press ls, you can see there is a file called program.exe. We can use this uh, program.exe. It is auto run file. Okay, so if auto run is enabled, the moment the guy injects his pen drive, you don't even have to open the payload. The payload will execute automatically. Or you can use the payload.exe. It will only work when the user opens it. Okay, so I can do a command to copy this payload to desktop. So let's do this: copy uh, program dot exe to home Abhishek desktop. What I'm doing is I'm copying this program from this set directory to my desktop so that I can copy it on my pen drive. So the command is done. 
if i check my desktop you can see here it is program x this is the mastermind this is the bomb that we have just created a powerful bomb so the moment user the moment a victim injects this on a pc let's rename it a program.exe doesn't uh, isn't very appealing so my friend is a is a great fan of call of duty who like loves to play this game so what i could do is i can change its name to you know call of duty is a game computer game if you don't know it call of duty modern warfare 2 okay dot exe so i've named this call of duty modern warfare 2 dot exe now the it seems more appealing so my friend will be like okay he has just given me a new game great guy let's open it and now i can just uh, plug in a pen drive put this thing inside my pen drive and send it to my friend only for educational purpose okay so tell tell him that you are doing this for educational and just for learning purpose just to look cool in front of him you can do that so anyway the moment is uh, he injects that pen drive onto his computer you'll get access but how you will access that uh, computer you can if you uh, go back to your set terminal window you can see he says create a listener right now yes or no his his saying is uh, do you want to listen to the request that uh, your uh, victim is uh, doing so let's say the victim has injected the pen drive onto his computer and you, now you want to listen to the uh, now you want access to his computer what you can do is you can set up the listener you can type in yes i want to listen he'll launch metasploit metasploit again it's a framework you must have heard about it and i guess a class today about metasploit i don't know so metasploit framework will launch and it will implement a listener here so whatever whenever the friend opens that executable file i will have his access here okay so let's wait for the metasploitable framework console to open and starts listening <clears throat> you can see there are different types of attacks we use the tcp one the re shell reverse tcp okay you can also use window reverse tcp metaplotter metaplotter yet again it's a powerful one the powerful shell provides us with more options reverse tcp vnc dll i want i will suggest you all to all google it or google these commands and get to know by yourself what this all means so meta exploit has been launched and uh, yeah it has started a reverse tcp handler on ip address this port 444 okay so what is, that means is the moment okay i just open bad file the moment my friend opens this on his computer if and if he is connected to the internet what will happen is as i showed you here the moment he'll open is a, a cmd will a command line interface will open in, into his windows computer and if he is connected to the internet that uh, command line shell will collect his pc to my pc and i will have access to whole his whole computer his personal information is personal files right it's like having this like this you will have a you will have a display like this you can just then go on and list all the directories right you can get to know how many directories he has you can type in inside his computer you can type who am i right and it will show you display like hp notebook abhishek all these information you can get once the, uh, your victim that your friend opens that dot exe file okay so today we got to know what social engineering is we did a email phishing attack right we also so let's do a quick recap we talked about what social that is the why i on the first slide i use this phishing image there was a reason particular reason for this i forgot to mention okay so we got to know social engineering is the art of manipulating people into performing action or divulging so i in the last attack we did the pen drive attack we did infectious media i i would tell my friend okay i have given you this new game this called call of duty modern warfare it's a great action game it's the latest in the series of call of duty and he'll be like so i just manipulated him psychologically i said i give calls inform like this is the game you can do and you can play it's a great game and he'll be like yeah he seems trustworthy because he is my friend so he 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 trust me because he is my friend but you can do with his but the ad hackers actually do it with different people he may give the pen drive to an employee asking them to install these files and calling a security 
advisor of your company and uh, i manage all the security things and all and you can manipulate the employee the employee the moment he will inject the pen drive into his computer his system will be compromised and once his system is compromised uh, i can then exploit his whole network and other devices connect to that to that company's network all right so that is what how social engineering works is so it's the art of manipulating people into divulging them into getting their personal information confidential information okay because and trust me this is the most powerful of all attacks in the cyber security because people are the weakest link they are so easy to break into even easy than machines only because we are emotional guys we are emotional beings it is easy to manipulate us humans okay we talked about history how kevin mitnick i'll suggest you to read his book of art of this the art of deception and or at least do a google search of kevin mitnick he was a great guy he died this year on july due to a pancreatic cancer i guess i don't know and then twitter bitcoin scam scam there are a lot of i'll suggest you also to you know read about the, all these case study of these social engineering attacks are done in the past so there are two types of physical social two types of social engineering techniques first is physical social engineering second is digital social engineering physical is just straight forward you just pretend to be someone else it's it's more like theft you know physical social engineering is more like a hands on work you don't need a lot of technical knowledge for that you can just pretend to be someone else with great confidence and you can just maneuver manipulate people into giving you the information right uh if you want a good example of uh, this social engineering attack was uh, there was a movie of leonardo dicaprio there is a movie called catch me if you can i'll suggest you to watch that movie i mean that movie is not related to cyber security but uh, in that movie you'll see how someone a great people someone with great confidence can uh, manipulate other people into getting personal information it was based on a real life story of a guy named I don't know what was his name. I for, I just forgot his name. It's a great movie. Catch me if you can. So do watch it. Anyway, the second we part we learned was digital social engineering, in which we learned email phishing, voice phishing, wishing it's called SMS phishing. Okay, infected USB, which we just saw, and then I just there's a type of security batch cloning, right? It's a physical means, not a digital means. so there are a lot of more types of digital social and digital and both physical uh, engineering attack which we didn't talk about because they are very miscellaneous you can talk, learn about them on your own which are but these were the most important ones okay these are the ones which are still used in the industry we the you know when in this day even in 2023 we have to teach people you know that when you get an sms please don't click on it when you get an email please don't click on the link even in 2023 so that is why cyber security is a has a great future because people are not aware of their you know protection or their rights and their basic protection laws so that is why a lot of them are exploiting them and you as a penetration tester will be the ones protecting these guys in the future okay that is why you all are this so anyway social engineering is a powerful way that can be used for both in a good way or an evil way okay a lot of you guys must be after this class must be thinking okay i now have a super power i will use it in my own way okay doesn't matter what the instructor say i'll he says that use it for educational purposes but uh, from now on i'll use this to steal information from my friends accounts and their computers right no no don't do that okay and uh, do this for fun or learning purposes only do this with your own computer create a virtual machine do it there and all, all, all that it's illegal as i tell you on every class um, this is ethical hacking we are learning and not just active on ground red black hat hacking okay so anyway i hope you all have enjoyed any questions you can ask them in the whatsapp group also yeah there is it let me share the attendance sheet with you all just quickly present mark attendance of all of you yeah okay okay let me share the attendance sheet with you
Thank you, Manish. Thank you. Let me send the file. Okay, it's downloading. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Mohammed, I'm sending the attendance link. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kaushik. Thank you, Vagdevi. It was the best session. Uh, thank you, Priyanka. Thank you. Anjali, thank you. Okay, so let me send you the attendance link. Mm -hmm. I'll send the link on the chat. Okay. Thank you, Sonu. Thank you, Hardik. Zeddy, I didn't know how to use the SE tools. Thanks a lot. Thank, uh, thank you so much, Zeddy. It's all. It's a great tool and easy to understand. Just uh, explore it on your own. Okay. So even if you have and uh, also. I'll strongly suggest you to use Google and ChatGPT. Although ChatGPT, being an AI that he is, he won't give you direct instructions on how to hack into a PC, even for educational purposes. But you can use Google and other YouTube sources, or you can even post your questions on WhatsApp group. We'll be happy to answer all of them. Okay? Yeah. So I've just sent an attendance uh, sheet on the attendance link on the chat. So I can go through it. Thank you, Zadie. Uh, I don't know is if there is any feature of pinning the command, but uh, Mr. D, I, I, I found the meta square to be much better. First of all, easy to understand, and uh, it has a lot of exploits, great updates, especially if you have uh, the premium feature. You know, they have a lot of exploits which the free, free version do not uh, have. So can you suggest some courses like we can bypass? Yeah, we can bypass the USB infections, USB attack by antivirus. Uh, we'll do that in the subsequent uh, classes. And uh, antivirus, yeah, if antivirus definitely will block it. But if you have a older systems where antivirus didn't have that in, don't have that uh, exploit in the database, the antivirus won't work on that virus. Okay, this is just for the learning I told you. Okay, some antivirus will reject it the moment you plug it in. If the system is completely updated and antivirus is on, everything is working. Otherwise, it will exploit the system. This is for the learning purposes. In the subsequent uh, classes, we will get to learn how to bypass antivirus. It is really easy, not that difficult to bypass the antivirus. So in any case, it's easy to exploit others. Yeah, so everyone, uh, thank you. I have uh, sent the attendance link, uh, sheet link. I'll send it again in the chat. And thank you so much for connecting. And let's see you in the next class. Bye bye. Make sure to add your attendance. Mega, my name is Abhishek. Thank you. <laughs> you went through the whole uh, uh, lecture and you're asking me my, what's my name. <laughs> nice. Okay, bye bye bye. Yeah, okay, bye everyone.